Hi everyone, my name is Ruben Ros. I'm a PhD candidate at Luxembourg University and for the Parliament project I developed a showcase to show what is possible with the parliamentary data assembled in the project. I was interested in the question of science and expertise in COVID-19 debates because soon after the first lockdowns, uh, intellectuals and political scientists argued that we now have a return of science in political debate after populism and fake news uh, and this post-truth politics, uh, science was now again in the lead in society and in democracy. Um, there was a rally around the flag effect, um, but on the other end, there's also polarization, skepticism and conspiracy theory. So I was interested to what extent this idea of a return of science um, is present in parliamentary debates. Um, and to investigate this question, I first collected more textual information on parliamentary systems and parties and collected relevant keywords um, and then used uh, several text analysis methods to look at the question from different perspectives. In this presentation, I will focus on the lemma expert in different languages. So if we assume that there is some kind of a return of science, uh, this could be reflected in frequency patterns in the different languages. So here are the normalized frequencies for expert in eight languages. Um, and indeed, there are some notable breaks in, for example, Italy, the Netherlands and Spain, and to a lesser extent in Poland. There's an increase in the lemma expert in parliamentary debates. So that's interesting. And if we look at the number of different speakers that use the term, there's also an increase. So I first thought that expert was mostly used by prime ministers and uh, health ministers. But in the countries where the term is increasing, also a larger number of MPs use the term. There's also different dynamics with regards to coalition and opposition. So in Poland and the Czech Republic, there are large differences between who mentions experts and who doesn't. And there's also differences between um, coalition and opposition using the term. Um, the next step beyond uh, frequencies is, is to look at collocates. So which terms are co-occurring with expert? And here I looked at collocations for the reference periods, so the period before the pandemic and the COVID period. And there's already some interesting words appearing in the top ranking collocates, words like advice, advisory. Um, but to get more, uh, get a better idea of the narratives of expertise, I looked also at uh, collocation networks based on co-occurrence uh, co information. You can read more about this in the full report. And the last step in my research is to look at the semantics of expert and expertise by training word embeddings on the reference and the COVID period for every language. And here we can see the emergence of new institutional forms like the outbreak management team in the Netherlands, uh, but also new uh, senses like behavioral scientists and epidemiologists uh, compared to the expert as a consultant or an economist in earlier periods. So by using these word embeddings, we can come close to the semantics and also by means of the same networks where you look at the broader semantic fields surrounding expert. Um, to conclude, I uh, observed uh, in, uh, increasing frequencies in some countries. Um, so that may hint at some kind of a return of science. But I also did uh, notice a uh, changing language of expertise. Uh, primarily through the introduction of new institutional forms that are being established in the COVID period, an emphasis on advice and decision, uh, and new dominant senses like epidemiologist and virologist. Um, of course, only looking at the term expert uh, does not suffice, so I also looked at other terms, but I want to expand this a bit more in future work. Um, and one other thing that's interesting for the question, the question of a return of science, is uh, the question where the science was discussed more positively in the COVID period. Um, and I experimented with different sentiment analysis methods, but they are not really reliable. Uh, so I want to work more on that. And on the bottom, you can see uh, one of the visualizations based on sentiment analysis of one day of debate. Uh, so I think that's promising, but we still need some improvement there. Thank you for very much for your attention. If you want to check out the code and read the full report, please go to the GitHub repository and please reach out if you have any questions or comments. Thank you very much.